Protein synthesis. DNA to mRNA to protein. Let's take a look at the process of going from DNA to mRNA to protein. In this schematic, we can see the DNA here in purple. The mRNA is being copied from the coding strand of the DNA. Once the mRNA has been copied and, of course, edited, it's shipped into the cytoplasm, shown here, the mRNA. Let's take a look at the blow-up of translation. Here, this blue or purplish shaped blob is the ribosome. The ribosome has bound the messenger RNA. Transfer RNA is bringing in an amino acid. It has an anticodon to match the codon on the mRNA. The transfer RNA carries the amino acid. The ribosome adds the amino acid to the previous amino acid via peptide bond formation. Ribosomes can sit at various sites on the mRNA, so the mRNA is being translated at several sites simultaneously. 5' prime to 3' prime transcription. Genes are read from the 3 to 5' prime direction from the template strand. RNA is synthesized from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Genetic information is copied to RNA according to base pairing rules. Sometimes this directionality, 3' prime to 5', prime, 5' prime to 3' prime, is a little difficult to understand. It's a good idea to, say, get threads or yarn of different colors and pretend one is RNA and one is DNA and see if you can understand intuitively the directionality of the transcription and later on of when DNA is copied. Keys to biosynthesis. DNA is copied to mRNA. This step is called transcription. The mRNA provides the sequence information for the protein. The tRNA brings the specific amino acid to the ribosome. Proteins are formed in the ribosome in a process called translation. Eukaryotic initiation of synthesis. Eukaryotic ribosomes are larger than prokaryotes. The initiating amino acid is methionine, not N-formal methionine, carried by a special amino acyl tRNA called MET tRNA. Let's take a look at this in the form of a schematic. Here we see the 5' prime cap on the mRNA. Initiation factors plus GTP plus MET tRNA. This is the initiation codon, AUG. A 40S ribosome with a bound MET tRNAi attaches to the cap at the 5' prime end of the eukaryotic mRNA. Notice the green 5' prime cap in this schematic. The 40S subunit with initiation components bind to this cap. Notice ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP, releasing an inorganic phosphate. The complex searches for an AUG codon until it finds the AUG. The 60S subunit is then added to form the 80S initiation complex. Remember, what we're looking at here is eukaryotic initiation of synthesis. Protein biosynthesis elongation. As with DNA replication and transcription of RNA, translation of proteins occurs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The next tRNA amino acid binds at the A site via hydrogen bonds. Peptidal transferase catalyzes formation of a peptide bond.
the tRNA carrying the growing peptide is moved to the P site and the empty tRNA is dislodged. As each tRNA unloads, the ribosome moves across the mRNA molecule, one codon, dislodging empty tRNAs and making space for the next loaded tRNA at the A site. Protein biosynthesis termination. Termination occurs when the ribosome encounters a stop codon in its A site. UAA, UGA, and UAG do not correspond to amino acids. When the ribosome encounters a stop codon, a release factor protein enters the A site. Here are the three possible stop codons and the release factor. The protein is released from the tRNA and from the ribosome. Notice GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP. That means this cost some energy. The ribosome subunits dissociate. Promoter, eukaryotic versus prokaryotic. Several genes can be co-transcribed from a single promoter and make up an operon. In eukaryotes, each gene has a promoter and some have multiple promoters. Promoters are important in gene regulation. Notice here the structural differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic promoters. Activation of amino acids. The activation reaction is catalyzed by specific amino acyl tRNA synthetases these are called activating enzymes. Amino acids are first activated by adenylation, forming an aminoacyl adenylate from an amino acid and ATP. Amino acid plus ATP plus tRNA plus water goes to aminoacyl tRNA plus AMP plus diphosphates. The equivalent of two molecules of ATP are consumed in the synthesis of each aminoacyl tRNA. Each aminoacyl tRNA synthase is extremely specific for a given amino acid. tRNA and protein synthesis. tRNAs are responsible for bringing the appropriate amino acid to the ribosome for addition to the growing polypeptide. Each tRNA is specific for one amino acid. One end of the tRNA is the anticodon, which specifies the amino acid carried by that particular transfer RNA. For example, the tRNA for glycine, GGU. This is the anticodon region. The other end is the site of attachment for the amino acid. Here would go the amino acid, in this case glycine. Each tRNA is loaded with its amino acid by a specific aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. Here schematically the synthetase is shown as this yellow circle. tRNA recognizes the codons on the mRNA because of their anticodons complementarity. Here, the aminoacyl tRNA synthetase has added the amino acid glycine. In the process, it's hydrolyzed ATP to AMP. This process required two phosphates. The genetic code. DNA is made up of adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. A codon is a three nucleotide sequence that codes for an amino acid. Here are the codons. 
Notice some codons have only one, for instance tryptophan, the UGG. Some, like arginine, have many more codons that code for it. However, there are three codons that signal stop transcription. These are at the end of this sequence. Take a look at them. Become familiar with the stop codons UAA, UAG, and UGA. Reading frames. The amino acid generated in translation depends on the DNA sequence and at what position that is reading frame translation begins. Depending on if the sequence of DNA is read from the first, second, or third nucleotide, the following amino acids are generated. Wobble and the genetic code. There are 61 amino acid coding codons and about 40 tRNA molecules for 20 amino acids. Codons that encode the same amino acid often differ only at their third position, that is at their third base. The binding of the third base is less stringent than at the other two, that is the first two positions. Because of this wobble, one tRNA can pair with multiple mRNAs. Wobble base pairs for uracil, uracil pairing with either adenine or guanine. Wobble is a critical concept to be familiar with. Peptide bond formation. Two amino acid molecules can be covalently joined through a peptide bond, yielding a dipeptide. Here we see the peptide bond that has been formed. If you had a protein being formed, the N-terminus would have the unbound amino group, the C-terminus with the unbound carboxyl group. The product is a dipeptide, and this is a dehydration reaction. Definitions to know. RNA, ribonucleic acid, is a polymer formed from covalently linked ribonucleotide monomers. Ribosome is a protein which along with rRNA catalyzes the synthesis of proteins. RNA processing controls a mechanism to control gene expression by how the RNA transcript is spliced or processed. RNA splicing intron sequences are removed from RNA transcripts in the nucleus during DNA transcription. RNA editing, production of a functional mRNA by the insertion or change of individual nucleotides in an RNA molecule after it's synthesized.